So yesterday, um, <clears throat> we gapped higher in the morning, um, having uh, the tax bill pass the Senate um, late at night, and then we we had, um, and that was pretty much the catalyst. Um, we made a new all-time high, then some sellers came and used that opportunity to sell the news. The idea, theory being that perhaps the market was being bid up coming into the legislation over the last couple of weeks. So um, like all other, you know, one day of selling does not make a, a changed market. Now it happened to happen uh, the day following the, um, the Flynn guilty plea, Trump potential more legal jeopardy, which caused just a huge intraday down move before we bounced. Um, so you put those together and you can say, oh, the market's it's starting to get a little bit loose for me, but that's something. Um, the way I look at it is just two things, major pieces of news happened back to back days that created some volatility, um, but we need to see something more than that to believe the market can sell off. So um, I actually put some levels in there just to use as guidelines um, based on the last couple of days trading. The support area here, we're getting this kind of craziness and we have an upside. We use 265. So this morning, you can kind of see we're we're gapping up here, um, about halfway between the middle of the second down leg or the end of the day down leg. I guess you could call it three down legs. Morning fails at the all-time high, goes back up, fails a few times at 266, takes out the morning low. That's your second leg. Here's a consolidation here right around 265. And below 264.80 was your, your final leg down to 264. So we're right in the middle of that. So I gave this kind of zone here where we consolidated in the afternoon. First, we want to look at 265, a little bit above there we had trouble, um, 265.10. We get back up there, we fail. We get back down below 264.80, then we look at um, yesterday's low as a target area. We consolidate above 265, the opposite of what we did yesterday. Then we break to the upside. We look to see if we can get to 265.40 to 265.50, um, where the second down leg was intraday. An IWM, we also gapped higher, and that was very steady selling. Um, I would imagine some people were spooked. I mean, the size of this move the prior day from 53.60 down to 48.70s uh, was probably, you know, definitely top five intraday moves all the time in IWM, um, intraday downside there, where we had the huge bounce. So I imagine that could uh, get some people to have sell orders in the next day. But same thing on this, we want to just kind of gauge based on recent levels. Um, and I put that in the sheet as well. It looks like to me that's 154. And uh, we had trouble there before the, the big day, 54 to 5420. That's what I have on the sheet, 54 to 5420. So that's that's interesting to me if we get back up to this spot right here and, and fail. Um, all right, Toll Brothers. So Toll Brothers, the numbers were fine. They were you know, very slight misses, but look at the run that it's had recently. So for years, these home builders were having trouble breaking out. We had this big move back um, 2011, 12, we had this big consolidation. It actually broke to the downside of that consolidation in the beginning of 2016 when the market was a little bit, was very weak actually. Um, and then started a, uh, a move back up to the top, the consolidation and broke out. When did we break out? Um, <laughs> just a couple of months ago. So had a pretty big, you know, 20, 25% move in a few months. Um, had this down move here on November 1. I'm not sure what that was about. Oh, that was probably because they were going to eliminate the mortgage deduction in the tax bill. 
So the home builders got sold, but then they put that back in, it came right back up. Um, they was bought into earnings. And so this thing has run a lot. So you come in with a slight miss after a 20 plus percent move um, in a couple months, there's going to be some sellers. So offers 47 and a half right now. So it looks like this might come into play to catch it up to the uptrend from the last few months. And below that is 47. Actually, it's below that on this one right here. 47.20. It looks like this 46.60 to 47.20 area could be tested. What do we got? We've got 75,000 shares. It hasn't done much. Um, but looks like there are some bids here in the 47, 47 area. So the way I'm looking at this <laughs> is this area right here, the 47.20 down to 46.70. Um, Does it catch bids in here? Um, move sideways, start to break to the upside, and then play it for a move back up to 48 to 48 and a half, um, and then do an assessment. Um, if we can move outside of this range here that I just outlined, we'll go from there. It's down a lot right now, over three dollars. So, you think some people would come in and, and try to get it to bounce right on the open? Um, and then we'll see. So it's, it's run a lot from forty dollars. Uh, HRTX, um, they're offering some shares. Pretty negative reaction. Uh, here's the daily. This hasn't been priced yet. They just announced that they're going to be offering the shares to fund some of their drug research. Sucks for them is normally. People will offer shares when they've had a big run and they can price them high. But in this case, I guess they need the money and it's been pretty weak. It started to actually move a little bit higher. Put in a low here, higher low, higher low. I was trying to break out above 17 and a half. Failed, came back in, and they made the announcement. If we look back over the last month or so, I would think there would be bids, buyers in closer to $15, 15 to 1530 in that area. What do I have on the sheet? Uh, 15 is the first support. And then below that is the, the lows from back here in October, 1450. Another one that hasn't it hasn't done much volume. So I'd like to get it, scoop it up right on. I'll put in a script to buy it right on the open into 15, um, and play it for a bounce back up to 15 and a half, 16, and then, then kind of see. Um, each M and Y. So this was one that obviously we've been involved with for a while. We're involved in it at five or six, all the way up to the 30s when we shorted it, and then it went back down to 15. Um, they have a big investment in large owners of MoviePass, a competitive product it was just announced from Cinemark. So let's take a look at it. So it did this move here. It went from 6 to 12, consolidated, and then went crazy. We were involved on the short side for a few days there. It came back down to 17, actually had a bounce into the 20s. See higher, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Um, and then came back and based um, in the 10 and 9 to 10 area. Did the run up, held up a little bit higher, and was starting to be pretty strong. Just slowly working its way back up. And over the last couple of days, that sold um, back down to 12. Better the product there, and it looks like maybe this 910 could come back into play. Um, so I sold off from 15 to 14. The next day, sold off a little bit more, half a point. The next day, sold off a point and a half. So it's, it looks like, yeah, I don't know, it kind of looks like to me somebody knew this announcement was coming. It was just very steady for a few days of selling coming into the announcement. Um, I would look for, you know, a little bit more flush on the open. But if it gets above, let's say, 1130, uh, look for it to see if it can bounce back up to this 12, 1180 to $12. 
Uh, that's probably what Kate, Kate Fitz was talking about during his call with his guys. He was saying, be careful about being long. Make sure you can hit out. Well, that's um, it's not an issue that applies to you. As a firm, we're treated as one unit. So if we're net short as a firm and you get long it, you have to make sure that you have the locates to be able to hit out. Um, that, as, you, as if you're listening and you're not on the desk, just trading your own account, that doesn't apply to you. So don't worry about that. Um, CDS. So CBS looks like it was great yesterday. I was traveling, you know, I was you know, in Chicago in the morning, but traveling the rest of the day. Um, it looked really good. It came down to long-term support. And after that, had a really big bounce. So sold off in the pre-market of 75. Looks like they're they're actually when I was around in the morning, I saw them buying it at 72 here. First time it went up to 73. I thought in my break here, it looks like I was gone and it, it actually did go to 73 again. Um, eventually, the third time it came down to 72 and held below. I'm assuming people were short this. Um, it broke below. It came off dollar 70 um, and then came back and they started buying it at 71. So they're they're clearly. It was both sides, right? I mean, people were buying it here on the open, the sellers won, and then the buyers stepped up to 71 here for a couple of hours, and they got a nice bounce back up to 72 and a half where this, this down leg started from. So, you know, looking at 71 as a level, certainly the, the buyers could step in there again. They play it back up to 72 and a half, 73. Um, if the buyers at 71 drop, you have 70 to 70, 20 support, but um, worth continuing watching. Uh, had some pretty good intraday moves yesterday. Uh, MZOR. So this was one that I made a trade in right on the open. I talked about, um, you know, the news. It could go either way. It'd be, if it was insider trading. Uh, most times, um, it, it's meaningless unless it's the high executives where they're going to have to get dismissed and find new leadership. Based on the price action, I could say that's not the case. Um, not a, even having to read the news, but you can see they bid it up from fifty dollars in the pre-market to fifty-six on the open, where I did short it right against the prior day's low. Came off quickly, a couple of bucks. I got out, um, and then it went up a little bit higher and closed above or at 56. So um, that's really bullish. So let's take a look at the 30 minute. So you need to see it basically get back above this 56, 70, 56, 80 and start to hold above here. But if it does, it brings 60, 63. Those are the two, those are the two resistance levels. Very strong stock right now. Um, and then I would change on this one. If you, it gets back down, I would have it alert down in the 55, 20, 55 area. It actually came down to this again and got below it. I would flip it and play it on the play it on the short side. Uh, and then MU, I just wanted to bring this up. We were looking at this a few, couple of days ago. Played it for a bounce. It did have a pretty good bounce. Got hammered again with the chip sector, I guess, yesterday. Um, so this you know, kind of area it did hit thirty. Look, it hit thirty nine, which was. This low right here. Now, if it starts to have some closes below 40, uh, you had a monster move, right? From 26 to almost a double here. I mean, this is kind of right in the middle of the, the move. This is about a 50% retracement right here. So here was the bounce from the other day I was talking about. It. Um, I'm sorry, that's not it. <laughs> it went down to 40 in the morning. Then we had the Flynn news. It went down and tested the lows. Went right back up to it and made 42. So that's a, it's a pretty big bounce. For it to come all the way back down, uh, obviously some big hedge funds got out yesterday. For it to come off through that low, very not quite as heavy volume as the opening bar two days ago, but pretty heavy selling. Um, Buyer is back in control probably if it gets back above 41. Right now, seller's in control, but this 39 is pretty good long-term support level. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens.
what stocks are in play, what levels in those stocks are important, and how we might go about attacking that stock. That's Steve Spencer, 20-year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.